One of the things I love about the, the grand challenges in particular is that they, there's this kind of, I think, deliberate echo of the kind of challenges from the, from the age of the Enlightenment, where a huge amount of new ideas that then ultimately became commercially viable ideas. You know, most innovation, you think about clothing, food, uh, transport, most was done on a purely commercial basis. Right, right. Now you have tinkers who often laid the foundation right. for the understanding. Right. I mean, it's one of the things I notice is just the <clears throat> diversity of the kinds of fields that the challenges have funded. I mean, you have everything from kind of astrophysicists to car mechanics who are in there. So that tinker tradition is still part of that that goal, right? Yeah. If you give people only a hundred thousand, which is that grand challenge exploration grant. That, that's actually numerically the one we give the most. Mm. They really have to be moonlighting to do that. They have to be using a lab that's funded by some something else, you know, trying it out at night. Now, if they can show a result, then they'll be funded uh, for their day job at a two million to five million dollar level. Right. But yes, they have to have almost a personal passion for their idea to want to prove it out uh, in that that first phase. And they we draw in IQ from so many different fields uh, once we frame that problem really well.